the world of medicine, where every decision can change lives, your peace of mind is crucial. This is where Pattern steps in. Imagine insurance made simple, fast, and personalized just for you. With Pattern, you're not just getting disability and life insurance, you're insuring your future and protecting your greatest asset, your income. In the past 10 years, Pattern has transformed the way over 20,000 doctors secure their financial well-being. Discover the simplicity of securing your future at PatternLife.com or click the link in the description. We work hard as physicians to take care of the health and well-being of our patients. But when it comes to our money, do we have the same condition of care? Probably, probably not. Let's change that together. Welcome to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast, where we'll fight and advocate for your financial literacy. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. Thanks for being here. Let's jump into the show. Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, we talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health freedom. And as always, I'm just scouring the globe looking for interesting people that I want to talk to, gain insights, share ideas, and share with the world. So that's my mission. Um, hopefully, you know, physicians, lawyers, dentists can take gleams and, you know, apply it in their own lives. So today we have um, Franco LoFranco, and he's actually transforming healthcare one entrepreneur at a time. So we're going to be talking all about the healthcare industry, the modern entrepreneur leadership skills, and uh, we'll go from there. So Franco, welcome. Dr. Lil, I'm excited to be on here. And this may be the first time you get all four freedoms going to be addressed all at the same time. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be great. I Like I said, uh, yeah. I'm always interested in uh, just talking to people. I'm very curious, you know, see what makes them successful. And hopefully I can share with that with people and um, tell us about your journey and uh, how you got started. Sure. Uh, I grew up in Canada. I now live in Arizona, in Scottsdale, Arizona. I grew, my parents came from Italy when they were young. And my father taught me since I was like maybe three or four years old. He said to me, an old Italian accent, Franco, always own your own business. I said, okay. So I got out of school at 22, started my first company. The only problem is my father forgot to mention how hard it is to <laughs> own your own business. I don't know about you. I lost all my hair from all the stress of having companies. I grew one company to 300 employees in the tech space. I uh, built a lot of different kind of companies from soccer schools to kids and things like that. And one thing you learn from building companies are which companies you should get into and which ones you shouldn't, right? <laughs> and quickly I learned, okay, residual income businesses are the best. And the ones that always need you are the worst. Avoid those, right? Uh -huh. The ones that are always dependent upon you. The ones that if you're not there, you don't make any money. So I learned how to get into the residual income world and understanding a little bit about tech and internet space. I built one of the first high-speed internet companies in Canada when I first got started in business. I really quickly realized anything with a recurring bill is good. And then <laughs> right, it's always the best. And then I got I came across one of my best friends called me. Uh, he and I were in real estate together doing business ventures together. And he said to me, Franco, I found it. Time and money together. I'm like, what is that? And he came across a direct sales company that specialized in services, gas, electricity, internet, cell phone, things like that, all recurring residual. And you can build the business around the world. You can get paid on people's bills in 27 countries around the world. And this company had created a platform where we can do two things, acquire customers, like imagine getting a cell phone customer in Australia and get paid here in the US <laughs> yeah. or get an internet customer in Spain. Yeah. or a cell phone company in Mexico. And it became very lucrative. It was really great. And so I got started with that and I built a team of affiliates of tens of thousands. And we've acquired hundreds of thousands of customers over the years paying bills. But healthcare is always the holy grail of getting into. And it's, it's the hardest industry to get into, but incredibly lucrative. So the company was always looking at how do we get into healthcare? So they tried years ago before Obama came into office. Then Obamacare came out and turned everything upside down. So 
they delayed finding a proper approach because getting into healthcare is not easy. And so a couple of years ago, uh, a couple of gentlemen that built one of the largest health sharing healthcare companies in the US retired and one of the largest tech companies in the world hired them. So, hey, can you please help us with our healthcare costs? It's out of control. They were like wasting so much money every day. So they went in there and built one of the most efficient healthcare backend systems of any company in the world. Mm. Well, the guys that, that started our partner found out about it and asked them, have you ever built a company from the ground up? Pure tech. Can you make us the Uber of healthcare? Can you make us the Airbnb of healthcare? I said, sure. And off they went with you know specific algorithms, all high tech, all technology in the health sharing space, meaning we can provide what health insurance does, but with better coverage and way better pricing. And it got launched and it's been incredible. Uh, the results have been absolutely astounding. What we're able to provide customers an average savings of 50 to 70% on their monthly healthcare costs. Yeah. Uh, the industry has seen nothing like it. Uh, uh, I dare people to find better prescription drug pricing that we, we can provide. But more importantly, in addition to providing a great service, we can get paid on it. We can get paid on it without all the encumbering uh, costs of uh, becoming insured in the industry or licensing or tests and all that stuff. We don't do any of that stuff. And so that we can build a tremendous residual income for ourselves and for our family. Yeah. And so that's been the journey. And that's how we got to where I'm at here talking to you today, Dr. Lou. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, like I said, like um, I'm reading the headlines and, you know, Amazon he closed down. It's like their fourth or fifth venture, you know, CVS, Walmart, um, Apple's getting, um, you know, it's, I think the, the, I think the healthcare company of tomorrow will be a technology company. So. And I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. And the reason is like old, established health insurance companies. They're very old. They got legacy systems. They got all this stuff encumbering them. And so we built a decentralized model that's member-based. So the money goes into your own personal wallet. It's all transparent. So you can see exactly where every dollar goes when you put it in. Nobody does that, right? So it's all transparent. Why? It's your money. You should see where it goes, where every dollar is being spent. And so it's, it's incredibly transformative. And it's only tech can allow us to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us, uh, what, what did you learn from, you know, building that company and how did that help you moving forward? Well, my first companies, like I said, the first thing it taught me, which ones to get into and which ones not to get into, right? Because a lot of people will get into anything that they're passionate about and that's fine, but it doesn't mean it's the smartest venture to get into. And so what I've learned is business is great and business is business and systems are systems. But well, what business can you get into that actually has a residual income component? Because what you want, because all, over time, it's great to work. And look, you have to work hard. I don't care what company you get into, but there comes it has to come a point where you can slow down. There has to come a point where you can slow down all that hard work that you put in to get the engine going. And then you can enjoy the income coming in because you built this. So to me, what I, I find the light bulb went off one day is like, wait a minute. I see all these other guys that built residual income businesses. They're golfing. They're having a good time. They're working a couple, but not very many hours during the week anymore. I'm still busting my butt out here because I don't have residual income in my business. So once I understood that and I learned that and I was introduced to the model, that was my biggest aha moment. And the second thing I learned was you have to be able to accept criticism no matter what business you get into, no matter what you're doing. I remember when I first started my uh, first internet company, uh, people thought it was crazy. Everybody told me the internet was a fad, that it was going to go away. In fact, this is not a joke. The CEO of Bell Canada, Canada's largest telecom company, told me I was wasting my time, that the internet was a fad. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? The internet is the future. But back then, people would say things like, Who's going to go shopping on the internet? That's a, <laughs> Nobody's going to do that. But that's what people said in those days. So what I learned was you have to trust your vision, trust what you believe and what you see and go with it. And you're going to get a lot of crazy people out there. They're going to be saying all kinds. Of, Don't listen to them. Don't worry about them. Just keep going. Believe in you. Believe in your vision. Uh, obviously, it's got to be based on something real, like where you believe the market is going, where tech is going to go. But if you do that, there's, there's always going to be naysayers, no matter what you do. Like when I got started in the essential services space with this platform, 
uh, people thought me, ah, it's a waste of time. Who's going to, you know, I always have faced negativity. And so I just learned, I don't, I tune that out, just noise. People are always going to say, uh, well, what is the, what's that old saying? You know, opinions are a dime a dozen. So <laughs> you can't listen to them. You got to keep going and uh, keep building your business and believe in you. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful advice. Um, and then one thing is, uh, the other thing you talk about is uh, the modern entrepreneur. Uh, contrast that to, you know, traditional forms of entrepreneurship and what mindsets you need to have. That's a great, that's a great, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. So in the old days, when you're building a company, everything was brick and mortar, right? Everything was, you have to physically be in an office. You have to physically be here. Yeah. Well, in today's world, the world's changed. So there's so many ways you can build virtual businesses. That, like I'm happy to say my entire business is all virtual. I have no employees that I get paid on customers all over the world. And I don't have to have an office. I don't have to have employees. I don't have to have any of that stuff. And so all that stuff is now optional. You can you still have that? Sure. There's still businesses that will always need that. And it's an option. Do you have to have that or not? Um, so the modern entrepreneur, it's all about looking at different models. What are the different models that you can have and look into? Because we've never had more options in the history of business and today as to what kind of business to go into. And it's also, uh, I'm proud to say, it's easier than it's ever been to build a company. Now, you still need a strong mindset. You still need to be able to handle criticism. It's okay. It's not going to kill you. It's fine. I know a lot of people today aren't used to negativity, but you got to be able to handle it because you're always going to face adversity and you got to always face uh, challenges. So it's really, it's like a game. Business is always like a game. And today, the challenges are a little different than in the past. So in the past, there's more physical challenges. Uh, maybe you have to pivot from one to another. Today, it's all about marketing and positioning your marketing from a virtual uh, social media perspective. How do we do that? So it's a, the, the, the twists and turns are going to be a little different, but the thinking is what's always the same. So it's the creativity, the resourcefulness. The one thing I like to say is the number one uh, trait of an entrepreneur is being resourceful. So regardless of what's coming at you, can you overcome it? Can you find a way to find the answer? Always looking for what is the opportunity with what's facing me versus, oh, look what just happened. Oh, now what am I going to do? That's victim mentality. No, we don't want to think like that. We want to think, okay, this is what's coming at me right now. Who am I going to be in the face of this? And I had a, an entrepreneur, um, very successful, owned 80 companies, crazy successful guy. And he always taught me, think from the future. And I, I said to him, what do you mean by that? He goes, I want you to imagine that you've already achieved your goal. It's done. So whatever your goal may be in business, whatever your goal is in life, it's done. Now, when something comes at you on the way to your goal that seems like that wasn't supposed to happen, right? what's going on, ask yourself from the future looking back, oh, that was supposed to happen. How did I address it? How did I come up with a solution? And he said to me, the reason why he did that was if you're in the moment right now in the present looking at a problem, it, be, it can be overwhelming. But he said, if you're looking at from the future, oh, I've already achieved that. Oh, yeah, this is supposed to happen to me. What was my solution? It becomes less stressful and way more opportunities of thinking clearly make poss make uh, become possible for you to see different solutions. So I've, I, I've always taken that on. So whenever a problem comes, oh yeah, that was supposed to happen. I'm making fun of it. I'm like, hey, how did I solve it? What did I do? Thinking from the future, looking back. And that's one of the things I believe a modern entrepreneur needs to have is don't think from the pre present, think from the future. Looking back and seeing it. And I promise you, when you think that way, solutions will come to you that otherwise never would happen. Hmm. That's, really, that's quite interesting. I like that. Uh, yeah. Never heard that from that perspective. Um, and then the other thing is, um, you talk about uh, leadership skills and um, people skills. Um, how do you develop this, and uh, you know why is it so important today? Yeah, another phenomenal question. So uh, I went to business school and I realized, okay, I'm not learning any people skills here or leadership skills here, and so where you learn them is on the court, and it's painful. Okay, so obviously I recommend people read books on uh, leadership, like anything from John Maxwell. John Maxwell is a great, one of my favorite authors. He's written probably the most books on leadership in the world. Great guy, phenomenal books. You can read any of them. They're all fantastic. I've read all, I think pretty much all his books. Um, 
How to Win Friends and Influence People. Phenomenal book. Uh, probably the number one book that was, that's been read on your personality and being great with people. But then you have to get on the court. You have to get on the court and practice. So any of these books, I always tell the people, it's not about reading them. It's about applying them. How do you apply leadership? How do you apply um, um, and get the concept of being great with people? So you're a doctor. You get a kick out of this. So there's a an MBA school. I think it's called Marshall. I can't remember which one it is. Anyway, they accept doctors that want to do an MBA. Right? They want to do an MBA and they go. And so the hardest part for them when they're doing their MBA is the section on leadership because <laughs> they're not used to it. They don't get it. Right. And it's the, the, the part I'll never forget I'm reading the study and they're like struggling, struggling. Right. And then there's a moment where they get it. Oh, I get it. And then the whole uh, different world becomes available to them. Yeah. Like, oh, I get what leadership is now. And that's how leadership is. Leadership is one of those transformative topics where you have to throw yourself into it, deal with it, and then have a, a transformative moment in that you realize what it is. It's like riding a bike, right? Remember the time you learned how to ride a bike and you'd fall and fall and fall and fall. And then one day, oh my gosh, what happened? You have the concept of balance. And once you get it, no one can take it away from you. Meaning you can not ride a bike for 10 years and you still got it. You still know exactly how to do it. It's all great. Well, leadership and learning leadership is the same way. Once you get it and understand what it is, once you, once you understand that it's all about leading by example, being a force of nature that's unstoppable, that no matter what you say will happen, will happen, and leading people into battle is a privilege and an honor. Once you get those basic concepts of leadership and you start to be that and live that, no one can take that away from you. And it's your concept for life. And that's truly what's needed. If you're going to build any kind of company, nobody wants a, you know, I, I call it, you could be a follower in business, but you won't make it. You're going to have to be a leader. It's like playing pool with a rope. Yeah. <laughs> you can't play pool with a rope. You can't play <laughs> pool with a stick, right? And yeah. that's what leadership is all about, leading by example. And you look at the greatest leaders in the history of the world. They've all been leaders by example. And so you have to get on the court and do that, and you're going to make mistakes, and that's okay. People will get mad at you. That's okay. You will screw up. That's okay. It's all part of the learning process. Yeah. Um, it's been, it's really, I, I love this conversation, and, you know, all these are um, gems of wisdom. Uh, what would you say to the audience, you know, today's world, we have a lot of um, insecurity, economic insecurity. You've seen a lot. You've been through a lot. You've accomplished a lot. So what advice or wisdom do you have to those um aspiring entrepreneurs or you know um people coming out of college looking for direction uh what what advice would you have for them um you have to be clear i always tell people this uh, and i'll give you an example by this i thought i wanted to be a lawyer until i saw what a lawyer did every day right so whatever you want to do understand what it is that you have to do every single day like i'm sure being a doctor <laughs> you must love what you do every day otherwise you wouldn't stay being a doctor right so you have to be clear okay what do i do every day if this is what i want to do and then look at that okay and study it understand it what do i want to if this is for me great but what would i do every day so people get enamored by the idea of something and not by the reality of what it is mm. so i always tell people Forget, don't stop looking at something romantically. <laughs> Look at it for really what it is, right? And what would you have to do? I fell in love with my business because I get to help people make money, help people achieve financial independence while giving it to myself at the same time. And the everyday actions that that would take and coaching people and supporting people, loving people, I fell in love with that. So I fell in love with that lifestyle. I fell in love with what it would entail every day to do that. So I tell people the same thing, whatever, regardless of what you want to do, regardless of what endeavor you want to go into, just be clear of what it is every day you would do. And if that's what you want to do, great. Go for it. If it's not, don't worry, don't even think about it. Find something else and trust your gut. Trust your instincts. Trust your gut. Your gut is very powerful. I know in medicine, there's a whole way you can look at your gut. It's like a second brain, right? Yeah. And it, and it is. So <laughs> So trust it because it knows what's right for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's very uh you know you know the media sensationalizes a lot of these professions and um <laughs> we <laughs> I've seen uh I've seen a lot of my colleagues not really know what they're getting themselves into and it ends up you know 
really in disaster. So, and then, um, you know, yeah, like follow somebody around. <laughs> like if there's something, like if this is a particular, prof- okay, go see what they do every day. Okay. Do, do I want to do that? And if it is great, then, then, you know, you made the right decision. You can close your eyes and get to work and cause it's going to take hours of practicing and mastering something and studying, which is great, but make sure it's clearly what you want. The last thing you want to do is get into something in two, three years down the road. You're saying, Oh, what did I just do that for? That was a waste yeah. of two or three years. You know why? Listen, the one thing we can't get back is our time. So be clear what you want to do. Yeah. And then, um, if you could uh, isolate, you know, last question is, if you could isolate five key things to your success, what would those be? Ooh, that's a good question. Five th- things to my success, I would say, number one is being persistent. The one thing you're going to have to face is ups and downs, and you've got to be persistent. Always be clear of what you want to do. Be persistent of what you want to achieve and be unstoppable because you're going to be facing criticism no matter what you do. You're going to face obstacles. So persistence and determination are a key component to that. Number two, keep growing as a person and developing yourself. We talked about this leadership, personal growth, or read books, take courses, whatever it takes for you to grow as a person. Because I had a mentor who once said to me, Franco, whatever you have today is what you could have today. So that means you're limited. You can't in having more. So it's not a result. It's not an accident. The results that you have in your life. It's not an accident. How much money you have in your bank account. It's not a result of the success you're having. None of that is an accident. It's all a result of what you can hold and have in your life as a result of who you are as a person and how much you've grown because we're never standing still. Either we're expanding as some as a person or we're contracting as a person, just like the universe, where the universe doesn't stand still, it's either expanding or contracting. And so same thing. Now he says, and he said to me something really powerful. He said, always try to be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean by overwhelmed? He goes, when you're overwhelmed, you can grow and expand. When you're comfortable, there is no growth happening. So all growth comes out of your comfort zone. All growth comes from being overwhelmed because it forces you to grow. So he said, put yourself in a state of chaos if you can and, and overwhelm, and that will have you grow. I'm like, okay, grow. <laughs> Third thing is uh, always to be able to have success, you have to always create a powerful environment. Mm. Because one thing I've learned from, I read a lot of Napoleon Hill's books on Think and Grow Rich, and one of the things he always says is the environment always wins. And it's so true. So if you put yourself in a victim-y negative environment, you're going to become a negative victim person and get negative negative victim results. So always surround yourself with incredible people. Like, you know, what's that old rule? Your income is the average of the five people you hang out with the most. It's so true. And so you always want to be elevating the quality of people that you're hanging out with mm-hmm. because they, they will determine how you live your life, how you be in life, the money that you make, all of that, because you start absorbing that environment. So the environment you live in is absolutely key. And then uh, you always want to also make sure that for success, that you're clear about goals. So what are your goals that you want to achieve? Where do you want to get to? And and don't be afraid to be specific. See, a lot of people get afraid to be specific. Why? They don't want to hold themselves accountable to results. But I always say, if you want an ex- if you want extraordinary achievements, you got to have goals that you are clear and specific that you want to go after and know how to make them happen. Mm-hmm. And then you're the X factor in that because the more personal growth development you go through, uh, you're able to do that. Yeah. And I would say last but not least, uh, a fifth key ingredient to success is understanding that you have to have, this is going to sound funny, your calendar must be your Bible. So what do I mean by that? So I had a friend of a, I had a, one of my companies on the board of my company was a premier of a province, which is kind of like the governor in the U.S. And he he was kind enough to come on my board, and he was also on the board of General Motors in Canada and on one of the major banks. So very accomplished gentleman, and he was famous because he was able to attract companies to his region of the country. He was very successful at that. So one day I called him to, for an appointment, and he goes, "Oh, you have to talk to my assistant." I'm like, oh, I'm calling you. I go, no, no, my assistant manages my calendar. Mm. Fine. So I, I go, this guy's on my board. I have to call his assistant now. Fine, I'll call the assistant. So I call the assistant and she goes, oh yeah, great, great. And I said, let me ask you a question. Why does he make me call you? 
goes, well, I'm he knows what I want. We set the goal. We set the agenda for what he wants to accomplish. And I'm the gatekeeper. I'm like, oh, interesting. Next time he and I talk, I says, explain me this gatekeeper stuff about the calendar for me, will you? He goes, sure. So he has this concept that the calendar is his life. Hmm. And what's in there will create the life that he wants. Mm -hmm. I'm like, huh. That's interesting. And then he said, if it doesn't exist in my calendar, it doesn't exist in time and space. It lives as an idea in my head, and that's not going to go anywhere. Uh -huh. So whenever I'm clear about what I want to accomplish, I put it, it's got to be concrete and in my calendar for the action steps to make that happen. And it goes, no, look, I got the freedom. If I have to, emergency comes up, I can move stuff. It's my calendar. That's my life. But my calendar is my life. And I live from that calendar and I honor what I put in there because I'm clear all those things, whether it's personal, business, spiritual, whatever they are, I will live from that because it's my day and it's my life. I'm like, oh. yeah. I just changed the way I looked at my calendar because my, my calendar was, ah, I'll stick it in there if I want to or not stick it in there. And if you look at my calendar, it's all. And then he said, the last thing I'll share is this. He goes, name them something that's fun. So if you're going to go to the gym, don't call it going to the gym. Call, call it crafting a beautiful body or whatever you want to call it. You can call it an appointment, whatever you want, that will inspire you. Yeah. Make your calendar an inspiration for you every time you look at it. I'm like, this is so great. Yeah. So like this, this call here was, I called in my calendar, changing people's lives. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because wow. we're able to change lives through what you've created in this podcast. And I just get to be a voice on that. And I'm just, it's been my pleasure to be able to do that. Yeah, that's very powerful. I really, I never thought of that. Um, you know, it's really that's why I love uh, you know talking to individuals such as yourself and you know high achievers, um, entrepreneurs. So, how can people contact you, follow you, you know, visit your website? And sure, and I'd be happy. I'll give people a couple of things. I can give people my Instagram is Cav Franco C A V Franco F R A N C O. That's my Instagram, and then I'll even shoot out my email if you guys want to communicate with me. Uh, it's Franco at CavFrancoLoFranco.com. Franco, F-R-A-N-C-O, at C-A-V, Franco, Lofranco, F-R-A-N-C-O, LoFranco.com. And for all the listeners out there, audience, um, you know, there's so many nuggets of wisdom, gems. So be, and be sure to check out um, Franco's um, website, resources, follow him. I'm going to do that as well and um you know thanks so much for an insightful conversation and um we look forward to hearing about your future success thank you dr lu and thank you for doing this we need more people like you that are able to offer this type of resource to people because it makes a big difference for people this is something when i was a kid i wish i would have had we made a big difference in the direction of my life and how fast i would have got there so thank you for what you do Doctors dedicate their lives to caring for others. It's time someone took care of you. Visit PatternLife.com to simplify your path to peace of mind. PatternLife.com, simplifying your insurance journey. I'm excited that you made it for another episode. You are truly the best. If you've been following the show for a while, you know that my passion is to bring you the education you need to find your path to financial freedom. Please come back week after week for new content, new resources, and great guests. Until then, if you haven't already, please be sure to check out the website, www.drchrislewmdphd.com for more support. I'll see you next week.